Welcome back to the news at 10. Infrastructure facilities, former indices for development and bridge for economic prospects and pro progress in states and the country. AKT in the southwest part of Nigeria is still yearning for growth and maximization of revenue generation. A lot of projects, however, some regenerative dot the state either uncompleted but completely abandoned. Our next report chronicles the series of projects that have been abandoned by previous administrations in the state. This 10-year-old residential estate of 40 completed buildings in Ifakiyekiti is another sad tale of abandonment. The Fayemi administration came on board from 2010 to 2014, completed some inherited projects, and faced its own set of priorities. During the first time of Dutkadi Fayemi, uh, he met some projects that were not completed. I mean, embarked upon by the previous administration of Engineer Shegmuni, and he did his best. The administration did a lot to ensure that these uh, projects were completed and actually commissioned for use. There were also some unfinished projects a civic center, a general hospital, and a residential estate, which allegedly have been ignored by the present administration. The Fayoshi administration will also be leaving the King's Market behind not fully completed. The governor claims he's run out of time. I didn't have any projects. I am not giving to him, uh, not completing projects. If not for the fact that I didn't think on time to sell those shops off plan, that project will have been handed over before I leave. But the money is there. But for the government, this is neither desirable nor economical. Any government that will come should make sure that uh, it doesn't allow his ego to override the, the, the interest of uh, the, 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 the people of the state. Complete all projects. There is no, no, nothing bad in saying this project was initiated by so so, but I completed it. The person who completes it takes the credit. That, that's the way we should look at it. If a state, a, a, a governor wants to begin to do a project, he should work according to his tenure. So he shouldn't bite beyond what he can chew. So he can't put the next governor into like beginning or to complete or thinking about the project you are not completing. But since it has been that way, government should be continuing. Don't look at the political parties right now. Look at the interests of the state. The problem seems to be the result of non-continuity by successive administrations who tend to ignore projects initiated by their predecessors even when the citizens are the ultimate beneficiaries. Barely one year after rice farmers in Wadil, a local government area of Kano State, benefited from the federal government's anchor borrowers program to scale up production. Their fate now hangs in the balance as massive flooding wreaked havoc on their farmlands. Over 10,000 hectares of farmlands are affected, casting a dark cloud over their future. Our community report tonight takes a look at the situation as the farmers appeal for intervention. Dabada Koa community is one of the several areas in Wudio local government area of Tano State where rice farming holds sway. While the crop may require a lot of water to grow well, the recent flooding in the country opened farmland to excess of it, leading to massive destruction of over 10,000 hectares. The dilemma for many of the farmers is compounded as they are beneficiaries of the federal government anchor borrowers program. They hope they could increase their yield this year, but the reverse is the case. I cannot even express how deep I feel because I lost more than two million five hundred naira dollar naira. Definitely. And only, as you say, this 10 hectares is only myself. So our people suffer because we depend with this rice. All our people will depend on this farming. So this year is come with very, very harsh and terrible thing. So, and some our people, it means some uh, koshiko, some people, they don't even get their food in the, the, one day. Some people one day, some people one time, three, one, one. Other people, they don't, they don't, they don't have everything to, to eat as a result of the flood. 
its hunger staring most of them in the face. Farmers who harvested 65 bags last year are now idle. Some could barely boast of one bag. Honestly, we cannot express our grief in words. After getting ourselves engaged in rice farming, we are just harvesting the remnants of the rice to see if we can get something. It's only God that can help us at this time. However, the Farmers Association in the state is looking to the future with renewed zeal, with expectation of government's intervention. Federal Ministry of Agri give an instruction, that is, uh, give a refund instruction to submit the list of uh, our farmers that are affected. And we have already submitted the list of uh, our farmers and then uh, the issue of uh, Nigerian Agricultural Insurance Cooperation, we have already submitted the list of uh, our farmers. We have learned our lesson in what has happened in 2012, and of course in 2016, and now in 2018, uh, nearly about 12 to 13 states affected. I foresee that uh, with those information and the backlog of existing information in the past, we should be able to adequately plan in the, in the near future. For now, the condition of the rice farmers of Wudil local government area is still critical. Any intervention from the government must come quickly to forestall a further slide down the road of despair. The Imo state government has signed a memorandum of understanding with a Chinese company to develop the Imo Industrial Park in addition to investment in power generation for the state. Governor Richard Sokorocha disclosed this during a curtsy call and signing of the MOU between the Imo state government and the Chinese company Ilion Group at the government house in Awari. The chairman CEO of Ilion Group Wang Wenbiao also applauded the commitment of the state government to the partnership with his company. In Nigeria, as the very important destination during my Africa trip this time, today I'm very happy to sign the MOU with the governor of Imo State. Is the MOU is about uh, eco restoration, clean energy, electricity power based on clean energy. This will actually show up the economy of Imo State. Uh, this will make Imo greater than what it is because all our problem have been that of power and we have the gas so gas is power and we've been waiting for this long to see who can move our gas into power so that the economic life of the people can change if alien comes here and establish this power and create this industrial park the industries will thrive employment will will grow in a geometrical progression and uh, people will be happy for it. Coupled with our international cargo airport, which is going to support the uh, industrial park. Yeah. These two projects will help the economy of Limo State. Meanwhile, the federal government plans to step up efforts at boosting buffers against economic shocks that may arise from its debt programs. A cross-section of Nigeria's delegation to the IMF and World Bank meetings in Bali, Indonesia, made the announcement after the annual program on Sunday. Channel's business correspondent, Temple Ashaju, reports. The Nigerian delegation to the IMF and the World Bank meetings this year comprises two ministers, the central bank governor, and other top executives of the fiscal and monetary authorities. One of the focal points of the meetings was the concerns around Nigeria's debt financing and the need to up the ante in the area of domestic revenue mobilization, which the fiscal and monetary executives explain as receiving attention. We, are, we have one of the lowest debts, in fact the lowest debts amongst our comparator countries. So all we have is a revenue problem and we need to work to increase our revenues to ease our debt service obligations. So we have to enhance our domestic uh, revenue mobilization so that we can ease the debt service uh, burden that we now, we now carry. We have a lot of headroom to borrow, but we're not rushing to borrow more because we have to consider the, uh, the current debt service that we, that we carry. Although Nigeria debt, debt to GDP remains um, uh, fairly okay, 
uh, debt service concerns were raised, uh, whereas we also raised issues that we are doing everything possible um, to broaden the revenue base so as to improve the uh, tax to uh, GDP ratios. General, general advice also centered on uh, building fiscal and structural reforms that will help to enhance growth, growth in our economies. Like other African countries, Nigeria ranks low at 152 in the World Bank's Human Capital Index. But the delegates maintain that government is not resting on its oars. One of the things in the ERGP that we clearly identified was the need to invest in our people. And we are doing so, but it takes time. Just by way of uh, illustration, the capital allocation for education, which in 2015 was 22.52 billion, by 2018 we are taking it up to 102.9 billion. In health, the capital allocation was 22.68 billion in 2015. By 2018, we are taking up the capital allocation to 86.49 billion. Nigeria's public debt stock stood at 22.7 trillion naira as of the first quarter of 2018, with plans to raise another 2.8 billion dollars in euro bond before year end. The high-level delegation confirms that the privatisation of more public enterprises are on the way to shore up revenues. From Bali, Indonesia, Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. And now to the arts. A Tales from Within is an exhibition of paintings and drawings by a group of young artists in Lagos. It features over 30 works of art that depict different topical issues. <laughs> These are seven young contemporary artists anxious to take on the world with their fresh ideas. Akintayo Akintobi, Gabriel Omonie, Kristen Allison, Ikechiku Ezegwe, Emmanuel Eweje, Daniel Ajayi and David Olatoe show the audience the creative genius in the Tales from Within, an exhibition of paintings, drawing and mixed media. Tales from Within is all about different ideas, different expressions from innermost mind, from your depth. So bringing it to the within, the, the presence, so that people can visualize it uh, with a fantastic art work. The crowd has come to see the varied pieces done by these youngsters who combine the African traditional art with modern concepts. <laughs> This, this work is trying to drive a thought and um, a message towards leaders who, are, who have the intention to mismanage the public fund. If you look very well, it's, it's titled, if you look at the top, it's titled Wanted for Embezzlement of Public Fund. A reward, $8,000. So the, the, the whole idea is to communicate and to advocate for good and credible government. Some of them look at the female gender using either mixed media or canvas or acrylic on textured canvas. As a human, we have lots of emotions bubbling down within us. And most of them, people don't like to reveal them, especially if they are the ones that are quite, um, are quite not revealing. Like the act of probably you being sad, you being cheated, you being vulnerable, stuff like that. This piece is actually talking about a lady who has a lot of emotions within her, but she's trying to hide it. She's trying to hold it within. That's why she's using the marks. Because with the marks, you'll not be able to recognize the person expressing these emotions since it's since, uh, since there are the emotions that she is not really comfortable with, like the fact of being sad and the fact of maybe um, liking money and all those stuff. While the others approach their pieces from different perspectives. The title of this work is um, My Faith Looks Up To Thee. It's actually a religious title. I just title it My Faith Looks Up To Thee because 
in any situation we are as human beings, God just needs our faith alone. It, this work is just trying to like uh, caption the, the sentence of the sentence of faith works. Faith is the evidence of seeing not seen. The substance of seeing not seen and the evidence of seeing or the, you know, just to be convinced that okay, there's something you are expecting something from God and it will happen. So this work is like you're looking at the picture of a young man looking up to God. He has, he has been faced with different, you know, calamities. But when he, he looks up to God, he's assured that, okay, God will answer his prayer and uh, everything will, you know, be soon. The art community will be expecting them to be even better the next time they exhibit. Still ahead on the news at 10, the Athletics Integrity Unit suspends Nigerian and African women's 400 meters hurdles champion, Glory Nathaniel for failing dope test. We'll have more in sports news. Stay with us. <laughs>